Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my very biased collection as usual. Um, today I would like to talk about a theorem which I call Kronecker theorem. Um, it's not just that I call it Kronecker theorem, it's called Kronecker theorem. The problem is there are many theorems named after Kronecker. Uh, this would be a specific one. So Kronecker was a really, really productive mathematician. Very impressive. Uh, this one is about polynomials, so algebraic integers, and it's kind of a game of darts with polynomials. Uh, we'll see what I mean. Well, it's a game of darts in my illustrations, of course. Uh, I leave it to you to decide whether it's really a game of darts or not. Okay, so I would like to play with polynomials, and by polynomials, I really mean now just with one variable, and I'm kind of looking for the roots, and in general, roots of polynomials will be complex numbers, so I like to illustrate them here in the plane R2 or C, whatever you want, would like to call it. And I have this, uh, well, darts type picture. That's why I call it darts. I'm just uh, stupid. I'm very sorry. Um, anyway, so the, the purple circle is the circle of radius one. So in this case, the roots of this polynomial here uh, lie all on this uh, unit circle of radius one. And well, well we'll show, see this polynomial in a second. Um, these are the so-called cyclotomic polynomials, or in, well, those polynomials, the cyclotomic polynomials are the irreducible factors of those guys. Uh, so the, the roots are the roots of unity, like, well, by construction, if you want, right? So these are the, well, here, whatever, whatever you see here should be all the fifth roots of unity. And there are five of them, and there will be seven, seven roots of unities and so on. Anyway, um, but in general, I would like to answer the question, like I have a random polynomial, what can I say about the roots? Turns out I can't say really much, right? I mean, a random polynomial has random roots that are just lying around somewhere and I have no idea what's going on. And Kronika's idea, which I'm going to try to explain in this video is maybe we have better chance of saying something if we restrict somehow uh, the generality. So maybe we should look at small roots, like roots, like in my picture up here that end up close or in um, the purple area, so in the unit circle. So uh, let's, let us see the cyclotomic polynomials uh, in action. So here's a very silly and easy um, animation made with Mathematica, which just goes through all of those polynomials up to n equals 10. So this, this slide I will vary in a second. And you will see that kind of by construction, all of the roots, uh, you get one more per, per n. So we have always n roots if n is n. <laughs> if n is n, you have n roots. Yeah, whatever. For n equals 10, you have 10 roots. And they always lie in this, uh, or exactly on the boundary of this purple region. So if we keep going here, so first root of unity is boring, the next one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, six one, seven ones, eight ones, nine, and 10. And then it runs backwards. And note that the second root of unity is or the, the, the one and minus one. So minus one is actually a root of unity. Anyway. So the question Kronika would like to or asked a while back, so Kronika was mid 1850 something, so 170 years ago, say, um, is, okay, we play this game now with a reasonably random polynomial. So here's a random polynomial, which I've generated in Mathematica using, well, random integers. So it was random integers here, really mean I just decide for the sign in front of, of one of the x's. And it would allow zero. So I've picked a random number, a random coefficient from uh, this set. I just did that su such that the roots of my polynomials are not too huge and still fit into my picture. I could have used random numbers from minus 10 to 10, from minus 100 to 100, but I really what I want is uh, integers. So no uh, whatever, pi or something, just, just integers. Anyway, so um, here are the roots of this polynomial. And as you can see, well, it doesn't look too bad. So some of the roots are in this purple region, some of the roots are here like this one, are outside. Uh, this hits exactly the purple region, which is not really a surprise because there's a factor x minus one in the polynomial. And you might ask the question, so that's kind of the question Kronika would like to ask, can we somehow find a polynomial such that all of its roots are in the unit circle? So really inside the unit circle. Um, under some nice restrictions, for example, we would like it to be irreducible. So this polynomial here has quite a few roots, and we might be lucky that there is a factor of this polynomial which just corresponds to those two roots. Could absolutely be possible. And then we would be good because we are looking for a polynomial that has roots only in the purple area, right? So I don't like this one. I don't like this one. Um, inside the purple area on the boundary doesn't really matter. So this one would also be okay. Turns out that you can't. So you can't separate the four roots here. So there's an irreducible factor of this type. 
So you can't separate the, the remaining four roots. And in this case, you really can't, uh, this polynomial, you can't make it easier such that you find a polynomial whose roots are all in the unit circle. Turns out that you can say a little bit more. So those cyclotomic polynomials, the first one is a cyclotomic one, this one here. Um, the second one is not, so this one is not. Um, cyclotomic polynomials are the irreducible factors of those easy circle type polynomials. We see them later. Um, turns out that the cyclotomic ones have the roots in the unit circle or precisely on the boundary of the unit circle. And this non-cyclotomic one just have, has the roots outside in the sense that there is at least one root outside, right? So here, this one is outside, but this one is inside. And I'm asking whether all roots are inside. So this kind of guy here already ruins my story. And so would this one. Um, Right? So I'm just looking for something where all the roots are in my purple circle. And I'm guessing now, of course, uh, but Kodak I probably played around with a few polynomials um, like I'm doing here. So here's another one uh, just randomly created using, using Mathematica. And as you can see, uh, outside and inside, and it's not quite clear. So maybe we find a polynomial that nicely connects those guys here, for example, and then we would have found a polynomial with, which is completely supported on the purple region, but turns out that this beast is actually irreducible over Z. And well, as you can see, not all roots are in the unit circle. And if you play around with this game a little bit longer, so a few attempts later, like <laughs> one of the, so Mathematica is super easy, of course, nowadays with the computer, this is super easy. You can just check 1 million examples. Um, if you need to do this by hand, you might want to be a bit smarter, but with the computer, as I said, it's super easy, just check 1 million examples, and there seems to be absolutely no way that we can, well, dart, right, this is the bullseye, we really can want to dart everything into the bullseye, and apparently there's no way to do that, and that's Kronika's no-go theorem, if you want, so if we kind of are in the situation, and we have at least one that ends on the unit circle, then all of them end on the unit circle. And we never see anything else than cyclotomic polynomials. So we can never find a polynomial such that the roots are somewhere inside here. Um, and so are all of its algebraic conjugates. So you want it to be kind of an irreducible polynomial because of course you can find some polynomial with roots inside the unit circle. Okay, so here's a statement for a some non-zero algebraic integer, so algebraic integer, just a root of a polynomial with integer coefficients, um, such that all of its conjugates are also inside of the unit circle. You can't do that because then they are all on the unit circle. So in other words, here's my example. Here's another example. Turns out that these are all on the unit circle and all of the factors, this is, should be a minus one here because I have a root here. All of these factors are actually cyclotomic polynomials. Right, so that's kind of the statement. So you list cyclotomic polynomials, these are, as I said again, the irreducible factors of our easy guys, x to the n minus one. So x to the n minus one does not need to be irreducible. There's always, for example, a root one. So you can always factor out this guy here. Um, and then these are the irreducible factors, the first 12 of them. And this one you might recognize from the previous slide. So here you go. It's the 12th cyclotomic polynomial. A little bit tricky, the 12th cyclotomic polynomial need, does not need to be of degree 12. In this case, it's of degree four. But anyway, all of these have roots on the unit circle. Here you go. Um, this one completely on the unit circle. So all of these have the roots on the unit circle. And these are the only polynomials you find uh, with roots on the unit circle in Kronecker theorem. And you will never find anything which really is inside of the unit circle, which I find it's a really cool and surprising result. It's this game of darts that I want to sell here. So you would like to hit the, the bullseye all the time. So strictly hitting the bullseye and you just can't. So you just can't. So you, if you hit the bullseye, then you would also miss the bullseye. You will get some picture um, like this, for example, where you have a miss and a hit, right? And uh, this will always happen. And that's Kronecker theorem. So what I like about it is it's a bit surprising in terms of the proof, which I haven't showed you, of course, is not so hard actually. Um, so I am strictly speaking, not sure whether Kronika really did it like me, like co calculated a lot of examples and convinced yourself that it doesn't work. So you can't always hit bullseye or whether Kronika was probably Kronika was just very smart and just wrote down an abstract proof without thinking about examples. I don't know. I certainly just feed it into a machine and see that it doesn't work. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.